It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. So both of you have been in the business for over 40 years. So take us back to the beginning. You know What inspired you to get into real estate and also what inspired you to uh, go out on your own and start your own businesses? <laughs> and, uh, um, I grew up sleeping on the couch with my sister until I was 12 years old, uh, watching my cousins have better toys than, than I had. Uh, one thing I learned early on that people who said the best things in life are free already had a secure economic base. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one thing I wanted to do was major was not to be poor. When I uh, was looking back in those days at Fortune 500 in terms of who the primary people who had money were back in those days, this was before tech, obviously, uh, were real estate families. You know, So that was my first idea. And I didn't really know what real estate was growing up. I thought it was like people who sold houses next door. Uh, but you know, after law school and business school, you know, I joined Aetna in the real estate investment department and, and that was the foundation of my career. Definitely. And, uh, Victor, after work, I guess after getting some work experience, you know, what was the turning point for you where you decided you wanted to start your own business? Yeah, I always knew I was on the path of being an entrepreneur, you know, so, uh, I moved quickly at Aetna. Um, and then I joined, uh, at four years, I had an opportunity to join a Back in those days, a private placement syndicator, and I opened up. I moved from Hartford to Denver to open up their office. And um, while I was technically employed, I was strictly commission based. So mm-hmm. you kind of eat what you kill. Uh, and while I was doing that, uh, I started my first apartment complex on the north side of Denver and built a 208 unit apartment complex in Denver. And, and that started me on the McFarland Partners path uh, of. Uh, First, the development, and then starting an institutional investment management business, and continuing to expand our development business today. Awesome, awesome! Thanks for sharing. What about uh, you, Don? How did you get into the business, and uh, what inspired you to start out on your own? My mother start. My mother start. My mother exposed me to real estate. She um, had me at nineteen, um, and after being divorced. Um, we moved to Detroit, Michigan. Um, I was eight years old and we moved to Detroit because um, her sister was living in Detroit with her husband. And my mother had worked as a secretary and administrative assistant in D.C. And after buying a home um, with her second husband um, in Prince George's County, she saw the line item for commission and saw how much was made with little effort and said thought she could do that and she got her license um and then started in detroit so i remember taking my uncle and i driving her to an interview at a real estate brokerage company mm-hmm. and it was just i think it was on seven mile or six mile and there was a row of just real estate company after real estate company they were all kind of consolidated and so i was aware of it and she explained it to me and that's how i got exposed to it and uh and that was the beginning of my exposure. And I knew that in real estate for, for, for the last 10 years of me being in our household was a source of income mm-hmm. uh, to support um, our household. And, uh, and then I you know, got exposed to it in that way. And, and that was kind of the beginning. And then I was going to go to, I went to school. I was going to be a doctor like my uncle in mm-hmm. Detroit. Um, and after my first year, I um, changed my mind. I went back to D.C., and started working in real estate as a sales agent, but interest rates were about 16, 18 percent. Wow, it was 1979, and uh, so I started um, appraising. And my mother had uh, had been at Fannie Mae and left to start her own consulting firm, and so I did residential appraising under her and another person. And then, you know, from there, I got more politically engaged, and um, and also, and then started my own appraisal business in 83 when I was 23. And then from there, I started working on my first development deal. I got a great opportunity from the then mayor of Washington, Marion Barry. And in 1986, started as a developer building a building in uh, Southeast Washington, DC in a community called Anacostia. And that was designed to kickstart economic redevelopment uh, for uh, that area. And uh, so that was my first project. And that's how I got started in the development business. And from there, um, you know, I it grew and expanded in other places. 
but I got my start mm -hmm. and it's important. I, I mean, I want to amplify it because mm -hmm. it's important that I got my start with a, a black mayor who was willing to take a chance and give me an opportunity. And, uh, and I valued that opportunity and, and worked you know, very hard to live up to it. But I was get, he, he put trust in me and gave me an opportunity as a 26 year old. In fact, when I first was working on that deal, I was 25. Wow. And he gave me the opportunity and had the confidence that I would be able to execute and, uh, you know, st stuck it out with me and gave me my chance. And that's what I, how I got started. And if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And you, know, you both have had a tremendous amount of success throughout your careers. Can you talk to us about uh, some challenges you've experienced, you've experienced that have helped you um, continue to succeed in the end? Well, I'll go first. I'll, I'll give you mine. So follow that story about Barry giving me my first start. Mm hmm. When that deal, when I was negotiating the deal with the city, um, one day I came back from a meeting into my office, my appraisal business, mm -hmm. and my assistant gave me, back then the messages were on little sheets of paper. They were like, you, and she handed me my messages. And I went through and one of them was from a reporter of the Washington Post. And I said, oh, wow, people are, and he wants to talk to me about 2100 Martin Luther King Avenue. So, Good news travels fast. They're going to do a positive story. Young African American, uh, born and raised in D.C., uh, is building this building in a historically black neighborhood, and you know all good, right? So I called, and it turned out he was an investigative reporter from the Washington Post, and wanted to do a story about how Barry was helping a political insider. Now, me at 25 years old, I did not consider myself a political insider, and so. I could not believe it. And I said, I'd call him back. And uh, so I uh, ended up calling the mayor's press secretary and she talked me through how to do an interview. I'd never done one before. Mm -hmm. um, and she walked me through how to do it and what to do. And I met with the reporter and he, they did the story. And um, I, one of the things I had known, I wanted to, I wanted to deal so badly. I undercut the price. The city had, was willing to do a, the same deal with a white developer, but he didn't have site control mm -hmm. and I got site control and they were going to lease it for $22 and 50 cents a square foot. I proposed 1875 a foot. Um, and so I was better financially. And, and so that helped me. But one morning I woke, I, you know, woke up, got the newspaper and right next to Ronald Reagan and the Iran Contra affair was my little building in Anacostia. And, so I was, I mean, in DC, everybody wanted to be very quiet. And uh, so I said, like, oh my God. And they were, and the headline was that the mayor was paying me above market rent to a political insider. The body of the story was overall not bad, mm -hmm. but I, I was disappointed. And I met a friend of mine uh, for lunch and we were meeting at this power lunch place called Joe and Moe's in DC. So I walk in. And as I get down the stairs into the restaurant, you walk down the stairs into the restaurant, there was a, at the bar was um, a guy named Billy Fitzgerald. And he was the uh, chairperson of Independence Federal Savings Bank, which was the largest um, black owned bank um, in uh, the United States. And he stood up, came over to me and shook my hand and said, welcome to the club. <laughs> and what he told me was there were not going to be any fans mm -hmm. except us. We're going to root for each other. Mm -hmm. And all of us, and, he, and there were a couple other black business people at the bar, he introduced me to them. And, and he told me, the Washington Post and none of the media, they're not going to be your fans. No one's going to root for you. And they're going to all be quiet when there's a bump in the road. So expect it. Don't expect a fan club. And when I needed support, that we had to be there for each other. And, um, uh, it, you know, it made me feel a lot better. Yep. Um, and I went on and got my deal done. But that was a very, I mean, I, it was every, the deal meant, you know, everything. I mean, it was me getting started. And here it was the most powerful newspaper who had brought down the, the president, um, Richard Nixon. And they were targeting me um, in my little one deal in Anacostia. And uh, so... Barry, in spite of it, um, didn't back down. In fact, 
he accelerated it and had the lease signed by the city administrator within days and uh, told me, don't worry. And I saw him that evening and he told me it's a one day story. Forget it. Yeah. And uh, and that was it. So that was my moment. And I think I realized that um, it was not I couldn't believe it. I thought mm -hmm. I was so idealistic and I thought that they the media would be happy to see um, a black developer build in a black community mm -hmm. um, and do something transformative. And I was shocked um, when it came off a different way. Definitely, definitely. Well, as they say, the rest was history after that. What's up, y'all? Sam here from the Black Real Estate Dialogue podcast. Thank you so much for watching another episode. Definitely take a moment to subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Also, visit our website, blackrealestatedialogue.com and follow on Instagram at Black Real Estate Dialogue. Talk to you soon.